G'day, Jake here from Yeti Tool Australasia here at Beyond Tools in Malaga, Perth. We're going to run through the Yeti Smart Bench full format CNC. What makes this machine quite unique is that we have a relatively small form factor machine, but we can actually process a full sheet of material. So we have a cutting area of 1250 by 2500, and we have an adjustable upper X axis that can fit 150 mil worth of material in the machine. So what makes this machine quite unique is that we have quite a narrow bench, and if you come down here, you'll see that we have our lower X beam that runs along the bench here, supports our spoil board, and essentially what happens is we adjust our upper X down onto our material and we effectively sandwich the two together. So what makes this important for a machine that's made from aluminium is we are bringing the support of the spindle as low to the material as possible. Whereas we have a typical CNC like we see in the background here with a floating gantry, the further away we get from the support of the machine, the less concentric the tool is. So with this method here, we have the support of the spindle all the way to the material and we're only about that far away from the support of the material. So we've got some great safety features on the machine as well. We've got some collision stop bars on the side here. So if we accidentally hit this, if we happen to leave something on the bench, the machine will pause, it will flash red, and on our console here, we'll get the ability to either stop the job if something bad has happened, or we can simply resume if it was a mistake. The LED lights on the machine are quite good because we get a quick overview of the status of the machine. The green is good, amber is waiting, and red is bad. So, the essential principles are the same as any CNC. We do have a relatively closed off set head, but the good thing is, we have an independent console controller on the machine, which gives us the ability to control, load jobs, set datums, and it means we don't have to be tethered to a PC to be actually controlling the machine. So once we have our file, we can load it onto the machine, and then we just use the console here to control. So with our relatively closed off Z head, it means we don't have much visual aid for the tool. So we have another neat little feature on the machine is this little laser crosshair. So essentially when we set up the machine for the first time, we set an offset and we use this to set our X, Y, zero origin. So if I wanted to set the origin to the corner of this material, I'd move the machine near. I can jog the machine to 10 mil, to one mil, so I can get it nice and close. And then on the machine, when I hit set, we have the option to use the laser crosshair. So when I tap yes on here, it then moves the tool bit to that crosshair location. We also, in the machine, have a little touch probe for setting the tool height of the Z. And we keep it as relatively simple as possible with the interaction of a touch screen and control of the unit there. Do you want to run something? <laughs> so, once we have a file, we can transfer it over a Wi-Fi network if you connect the machine to a Wi-Fi network. The good thing about the Wi-Fi network as well is that we can get software updates to the machine. There are software updates constantly coming out from the machine. Even if you do have an older machine, even the first generation of these machines still get the latest software updates. So, having the machine connected to the Wi-Fi network means that every time you turn on the machine, it will automatically check for updates and will prompt you to update the machine. Once we have our file loaded, either via Wi-Fi transfer or we can simply connect a USB stick into the side of the console here, we can load it from the console. We can choose the various files that have already been saved to the console. Whenever we transfer something to the console, it stays on there. So if we want to run a job again, we can simply select it from the console here. I'll select one of these. You'll see the name preview, and we hit the tick. We'll load it to the job cache, and then we also have the ability to check the job for any errors. So what that will do is it will check the G-code file, make sure that there's nothing weird happening in it, and make sure the spindle's turning on, make sure the RPM is adequate, make sure that the feed speed of the machine is suitable. 
um, and it'll make sure that it'll fit in the actual cutting area of the machine, depending on where you set the start point. So what I'll do is I'll load the file, and once the file's loaded to the machine, we'll press play, and you can see it start cutting. We'll probably have to pause. It's going to take. Care. So the Editool Smart Bench is actually completely made in the UK. The history behind the machine is. There are three engineers that started in 3D printing about 15 years ago, and they made little kit 3D printers, sort of at the dawn of 3D printing. Um, that was a project they worked on for about eight years. They sold all their IP for everything they developed to a large 3D printing firm in America, and then once they did that, they started on the CNC project. So they saw that they couldn't do too much more with the 3D printing world that would actually revolutionize or change things. They did see a gap in the market for the CNC's, where you typically have your larger, more industrial-based CNC machines, or you have your very, very hobbyist machines. So there was that little gap in the market where there was lots of people that wanted to be able to produce full-size parts, larger parts, nest full sheets, um, but their only option was to either build something themselves or buy a large industrial machine. Which for a lot of people, that might not be feasible. They might not be able to justify that yet. They might not be able to physically have that in their workshop. They might not even have prepaid power in their workshop. So this sort of messes into that little category where we have a machine that runs off single phase, 10 amp, and it is relatively light and it's actually portable. The machine's made up of four components, so when we set these machines up, it takes about 10-15 minutes to set it up, and all the parts that compromise are the legs, the rings, the x-axis, and our z-head. So those are the four major components. So those all come apart, so you can actually pack the machine away it's very easily. Once we have our file loaded to the console, all we have to do now is press the play button on the machine, We'll be presented with a screen. We can choose the type of tool that we have in the machine. Right now we have the spindle mounted with a rotary tool. Uh, we also sell an accessory called the CNC stylus. That is basically a passive tool that we can insert drawing devices, um, vinyl cutting blades, which just mounts into the spindle holder there. Um, so if we select that option, it won't trigger power and can, it'll conserve power to the machine. But what we do want to do is select the router and then we want to make sure the spindle will actually raise when we pause the drop. Once we read all the fire warnings on the screen, we click I understand, and then we're presented with the job screen. So whilst a job is running, we have the ability to adjust the speed of the machine and the RPM of the spindle as well. And we'll get a general overview on how much of the file is actually finished. So once we're happy, we can press go. Smartphone has an outlet for the shot back for our dust extraction, so when we press go on the machine, the power to the vacuum will automatically stop. So as long as we have a vacuum that has a mechanical on and off switch, we leave the vacuum turned on at all times, and in that way the smartphone can trigger the power to the vacuum automatically when a job starts. When the job finishes, the vacuum will turn off automatically. So there, we just let the smart bench do its thing. <laughs>